Well, phantom limb pain can be quite tricky to treat in some situations where the phantom limb has got a contracture. For example, if we assume that the, this is the missing arm, so there is, no, there is no limb, and this is the normal arm, quite often the person will have a contracture in the, in the limb that will follow typical way an arm will contract. If you ever see somebody with a head injury um, or a palsy of an arm, classically the fingers will come round, the arm curls round, and you'll see it like so, and you'll get this very, very stiff arm where the tendons and the ligaments have pulled tight and it's pulled up. It can be quite an uncomfortable situation, quite painful. Various physiotherapy treatments will attempt to address that. Now here's the important thing to consider. The, the problem, if the arm is contracted following a head injury, the problem is not in the arm. The arm is fine. It's the head injury on this side that would have actually caused the problem here. So the change in information processing, the sensory motor cortex, the change in function there, results in this contracture. The problem is originating in the brain here. It's not originating in the arm. This is important consideration because when we lose a limb, especially if it's uh, an upper limb, say from the shoulder, and there is, there is no arm there, the, the, the brain will still begin to do the same function that's going on. And often we will see the phantom will develop the contracture just as if the arm is actually there. Now here is the problem. If the arm is contracted like so, or even if it's behind the back, the person's not going to be able to insert their arms inside the mirror box because they can get one in there, and when they look at the reflection, what they're seeing, of course, is what is obviously a reflection because the sensory information that's, being, that's originating inside the brain says the arm is folded under the elbow or under the shoulder. There was one chap I worked with, his, um, what happened to him, he was in a plane crash and he actually lost the, lost the arm at the shoulder. A number of other had multiple injuries. Now when I saw him, probably about four years after the event, his arm was actually like so, and it was folded around and it was contracted. Now various, various anaesthetists and, and specialists had worked with him to try and release the pain because he had an excruciating pain throughout the whole of the arm and into the shoulder, even though, of course, it was missing from here. He couldn't get it in the mirror box. So the mirror box was wholesale and ineffective for him. So now, the guy comes to see me. What I've got to do is release the contracture enough that he can get the phantom inside the mirror box to see. This is pretty much the process we will follow. Just supposing this is the phantom and this is the shape it's got. Often it will be a little bit shorter for some reason than the real arm. What I'll get the person to do is to form a mirror image so they can sculpt for me with their good arm what I can't see because I can't see what the phantom looks like. They can describe it to me but I'll get them to form a mirror image. So there's the phantom, this is the real arm. Now what I'll begin to do is the same way in working when you're doing physiotherapy with people um, or variations on the physio to release the contracture. They are to keep the good arm, the arm that's present, exactly the same as the contracture is, exactly the same. And what I'll do is I often get them to close their eyes, I'll start to manipulate just a little bit, manipulate this, not pull it out, not wrench it, but just begin to introduce variations, the sensory data of this arm, and into whatever. They have to keep that, the mirror image of what's happening. Invariably, this is what I found. By releasing the contracture that they're making happen here, this one now starts to keep pace with this one. It's like a pace and lead using the, the limb that's present. So with my pilot, what he had, he put his good arm behind him so I could have some idea of what the phantom was doing and over about, it took me about 45 minutes, managed to release it enough that it was in front of him like this. So that's where the phantom was. That was the point I could then get him to put both arms, well the phantom and the good arm, inside the mirror box. And we created the effect that way.